Hey, welcome back. Uh, welcome to the Pond Update video that has been so highly requested from all of you. Honestly, I've had so many comments asking, how's the pond? How are the fish? Did the fish survive summer? Can we see the pond? So here we are. This is what this update is all about and it's all for you guys. So we're going to do a little bit of maintenance on this pond. We're also going to check in on my small Belfast sink wildlife pond. We're going to do a little bit of cleaning, a bit of maintenance, but I've also got some really big news about the fish in here. And um, yeah, we'll just have a little talk about the pond setups that we've got here. So I hope you enjoy our pond update today. So I set up this new pond in June last year, 2022, uh, because I wanted a pond for me, a bit of a relaxation ornamental pond that I could sit and look at from my seating area. And so in here, we've got a mix of different plants and I put in some Medaka rice fish. Now, the subject of Medaka fish and keeping them outdoors is now up for debate a bit. <laughs> But at the time when I bought them, there were lots of people sharing that you can keep them outdoors uh, because they're used to um, shallow water. They can survive in smaller tanks like this. Um, and I thought, great, these are going to be perfect for keeping down the mosquito larvae and that sort of thing. But I've now come to realise in the last few weeks, actually, that um, they're actually sort of meant to be kept indoors or they're trying to prevent people from selling them as an outdoor fish due to the potential risk to our native wildlife population. Um, and you might think, well, how is this going to spill into our natural waterways? Well, it happens by things like birds uh, that might bathe in here and then fish eggs get stuck to their feet and then they go somewhere else for a swim. And then that's how it can also spread. Um, so I'm aware that I maybe shouldn't be keeping these outdoors now but I don't have room for them indoors. I, I'm not ready to do like an indoor setup, uh, but just bear in mind uh, that information and that rice fish are probably not ideal for keeping outdoors. With all that being said, the place where I bought them from, a reliable, reputable online um, aquatic shop, said you can keep them outdoors. So I didn't feel like I was doing anything wrong, um, but you know, I do understand. So what I've done is I constantly keep this mesh over the top to try and prevent anything from going in um, that shouldn't be. And it's trying to rain, which is perfect. <laughs> so how are the fish? Well, I started with five. I lost one within the first two months and I think it was a little bit small. And to be honest, I think it got bullied by all of the others because they were constantly chasing it around the tank. I think it was a bit exhausted. Um, and I've come to learn that if you have too many males to females, then they can get a little bit aggressive with each other and do that sort of thing. And I think it was just a bit too small, a bit too stressed. And I think that's why that one died. We then had a very cold spell in um, December <laughs> where the tank froze incredibly hard. I didn't have time to move them, the fish anywhere warmer. And I, I'd since lost another two over the winter time. Um, and I'm assuming it's probably to do with that, which means I'm left now with two fish in the pouring rain. <laughs> Be right back. Okay, well, the rain has eased up enough for me to come back out of the shed now. <laughs> um, so yes, that's the situation on the Medaka fish. I have two remaining. It's the black one that you can hardly see in the tank, which is, yeah, something I didn't really think about when I bought it. And also the orangey, coppery brown one. So um, luckily, I think I named them the right genders because the black one, I believe, is female and she's called Mari. And the golden one is Fergus. I gave them Scottish names because the, um, well, even though they're Japanese fish, the um, supplier is based in Scotland. So yes, they're the two remaining ones. So next up, we're going to give this pond a bit of maintenance. I need to tidy up some of the plants in there because there's a lot of dead leaves, um, which aren't going to be any good to the water balance levels in terms of nutrients and that kind of thing. Um, and we'll also look at some of the plants that aren't currently in here because you might think it looks a little bit empty. 
<laughs> so we'll take a look at those first and then get this cleaned up, take the fish out and um, give you that exciting update on the fish as well. So yeah, last year when I set up the pond, I bought a Saracenia, which is the pitcher plant, and a sundew as well. And I made a little rock garden pond thing. I made a video, I'll link it below. <laughs> and well, the Saracenia stayed out all winter long because, well, I'd seen in America, they cope with frost and snow. And well, we had minus seven and a frost for, that lasted about two weeks and the frost on the pond, like the ice, was probably about four or five inches deep. So um, it's not looking too great. It might recover. <laughs> Let's have a look. About two weeks ago, I took it out of the pond and I trimmed all the old pictures back to here. Those are just weeds. Let's get rid of those. And I put it in the polytunnel in this bucket of water so it stays damp. In case you missed the video, this is a porous lava rock. There's a small hole in the bottom and then I drilled out this larger hole in the top that I've planted it into. It did so, so well in this all summer long, but the frost and the cold may have got to it. Although I'm a little bit hopeful because can you see that bright green in the center? I think those could, could well be new pictures coming up. It's just a bit late if, uh, if it is coming up we will see so that's just a bit of a waiting game on that one but one that really did surprise me was the sundews that I kept in the pipe tunnel over winter a bit smarter on that front and look at all this new foliage the little sticky traps that uh, they actually catch really tiny little flies and I'm just so impressed that these have survived the winter I really didn't think they would so I planted one of the rocks up with those as well. But I think it's just really helped that I kept this one in the tunnel and I probably should have done the same with the Saracenia, knowing what I know now and the winter that we went through. But these aren't as hardy as the Saracenia and just look. So I'm excited to get these growing again. I don't know if I'm gonna put them in the pond straight away. I might let them grow on a little bit more first. So this has done absolutely fine. This is the relative of the mare's tail. Um, so that one's looking lush. We've got a pond uh, water lily right down in the bottom that I need to sink a bit lower now that um, it's a new year. You, you're supposed to submerge them very gradually um, when you get a new p uh, pond water lily. I've got an arrowhead type plant over there. I don't know if it's dead or if it's just slow to wake up. And we've also got the pond um, clover that's just starting to push out lots of new growth. But you can see all this brown dead stuff. I need to cut all of that back so that it doesn't send the pond all murky. And we've got to find the fish because I need to take them out. I don't want to disturb them whilst they're, there they go. There's Fergus. <laughs> uh, don't want to disturb them. Oh look, and there's Mari behind, black one. A bit difficult to focus with all this rain. So yeah, I'm going to grab my net catch the fish, give them a little bucket of water for the next half an hour and um, tidy up those plants and tell you all about the pair of fish that I have remaining. Now the cleanest bucket that doesn't have holes in that I have is actually this. So I'm going to scoop out a bit of the water, try not to disturb my fish and then fish them out with a net. If you're wondering about this setup and anything at all, I do already have a separate video all about the initial setup. If you're interested in watching that, I'll make sure I link it below. So this will be their temporary pond for a short while. I've just been out and bought a new uh, fishing net because, well, I lost my small old one. It's probably hiding in the shed somewhere. So I've got to find my fish. They're hiding behind that log, come on. Oh, I've got Mari. Here she is. There you go. Okay, it's all right. Okay, well, they're both in here now. So I don't have to stress them out too much whilst I'm rootling around in the pond. I've put the log in there as well, and they're currently hiding under it. They're probably a little bit annoyed with me. So I'm just going to move these aside, we'll clean up the plants and then I want to talk to you about these two that have formed a very special relationship. 
I don't know what's on my hands, you know, and I don't want to be putting potential chemicals into the pond, such as, you know, hairspray or anything like that. So I'm going to put these on so I'm not going to contaminate the water at all. And first up, I want to look at this clover plant because this is the one that needs probably the most trimming. Oh, wow, I didn't realize quite how rooted this one is. Oh my gosh, would you look at that? Wow. So I placed all of the plants on top of pots to give them a little bit of height here in the pond. And uh, well, they've definitely rooted very, very well. And all I'm gonna do is take away lots of this brown foliage that's otherwise just gonna clutter up the water. So yeah, I'm just gonna take away all of the dead leaves and leave them here by the side of the pond, looking out for any critters, although I don't have many in here, I doubt, as it's not a wildlife pond, the, um, the fish just eat anything that falls in. I might also just trim, trim these roots back a bit. Bit of pond weed, you can go back in. But yes, these pots are pond plant pots, so they've got lots of holes all around the outside, which is why there's just so, so many roots. I'm just getting rid of some of these old leaves because it's underneath a tree as well. A lot of leaves would have fallen into this pond over the autumn and winter time last year. So I'm just trying to get some of that out. I'm actually happy with that now. So that's going to go back into the... Yeah, because these like to be a certain height and depth in the water, I'm just going to replace it back to where it was before. Let's pop that in. Now I do have an air pump for this pond. It runs by solar power and it worked fine, but I did actually switch it off in the end because I think the fish prefer it a bit more still. Now this next one, I believe is the arrowhead vine. And I wasn't sure if it was gonna be alive still, but I can see green shoots here, which bodes well. So yes, we've got good green shoots, which is great and not too much gunk around that one. I'm just going to find a nice spot for it back where it was. Ooh, wow, this one. <laughs> That's grown incredibly well. Like you see again, we've got all this black. It's covered in algae, which isn't a bad thing, but just want to get some of those gross bits out. We've got a weed here in the UK called mare's tail and it's one of the most impossible to get rid of weeds and uh, this is related to it but it's a water version and you can see how this one's starting to spread through the um, roots it's starting to suck her out. Is that a worm? How did you get in there? I'm just gonna trim the roots back a little bit I don't really want it spreading all through throughout the pond. I'm going to leave this one aside so I can actually get my net in there and scoop out a few other things that are unnecessary. So yeah, I'm just going to use my lovely little children's net to scoop out any leaves, any of the rotting debris that's down in here. Oh yeah, and also my pond lily, water lily, I keep calling it a pond lily. Pond lily, water lily, you know what I mean. And I believe this is Alba, I think it's a white one that I bought. A few leaves in there, but otherwise we've got new growth that's coming up. And this is, yeah, it's a dwarf one, so it's not gonna overtake my pond. And it lives at about one and a half feet below the water line. 
So, but you have to move it gradually further and further down. And now that it's in its second year, I'm actually going to remove this pot that it was balanced on and then place it right at the bottom of the tank. Let's scoop some of that debris out. And what this will also do is give my fish a lot more room to swim because at the moment there's a lot of pots in here that are given the height so they don't have as much sort of volume shall we say or area so yes this one's now going at the bottom just slowly sink it down there we are now i'm gonna put the other one back in so this is probably the main plant in here and I do love it. That can sit there. Do I put the sundew back in? I'm not sure. I might leave it a little while. Or do I just wedge it? Yeah, I think I'm going to wedge it in like that. Yeah, quite like that. So these two will soon really fill out. The water lily will soon come up to the top. And it's starting to rain again, but we're gonna have a little look at the fish. I'll tell you all about the exciting news. Let me just move this log back into the pond. It's probably where they're hiding underneath. There they are. Yes, that orange one is incredibly good at disguising herself, but this black one here, Mari, I believe is pregnant because her belly is incredibly swollen and the other one, Fergus, keeps following her around. So I believe that very soon she is going to start laying her eggs and then she'll actually carry them on her body for a while. Fergus will come along and fertilise them and then she'll deposit them onto... Uh, in nature they use like a strand of rough foliage and then it will take probably about 10 days for them to um, hatch and I might actually have some little baby fish which is quite exciting and I was beginning to feel a little bit sad because these guys you know they would normally live in a shoal of a group of fish you know fish are social creatures and I started to feel quite sad that there was only two of them left so if I'm able to raise some little babies <laughs> then that would be rather exciting, wouldn't it? Fergus is currently very good at hiding, but he is in here. I think he's just there, look. Yeah. So this one here is the male. Little Fergus. And this is what I've been feeding them. Uh, it's very small little food. Uh, they're not quite babies anymore, but they they do still eat it because it's nice and small. And I've noticed that Mari, the black one, is incredibly hungry. <laughs> so yeah, I think she is pregnant. There's Fergus. Calm down a little bit now. You can have some food. But yeah, they don't get very big. They do stay quite small. That one's an orangey one, and we've got the black one. So it'll be interesting to see if I do successfully raise their little fry, that's what you call baby fish, uh, what colour they'll be, whether they'll be a mix of orange and black. Oh, look at them together, <laughs> mum and dad. You can see there the size comparison, just how swollen the black one is compared to the golden one. And the golden one keeps following her around, waiting for her to lay those eggs so that she, he can fertilise them whilst she's still carrying them on her body. So I'm watching with anticipation to see how this one develops. Now, if I do get little tiny baby medaka fish, it's important that you keep them separate from the adults because when the babies hatch, they don't see them any different to food, so they might actually eat their own children. 
But what you can do is separate the eggs or the young fish from the adults, either by creating a little nursery tank inside the tank, putting them in an entirely separate tank. Um, but to do that, you've got to either catch the eggs or catch the young baby fry. And I've seen on YouTube people making these little things, which is called a fish, what is it? A mop, a fry mop, something like that. Essentially, you're recreating a rough surface and apparently the Madaka really love to lay their eggs on this. Essentially, it's just a um, scouring sponge that's shredded a little bit and put onto a bit of foam. So this will float on the surface and then once Mari lays her eggs, she'll probably choose this because it's rough and rub her body against it so that those eggs are then deposited on here where they'll hatch in about 10 days time. Uh, but in that time, I can choose to either put this into a separate tank and just keep them separate and just keep an eye on if we've got any eggs or not. So uh, this is now currently also living in the pond and it just floats there on the surface. And I'm going to be checking it every couple of days, see if we've got any eggs. I'm not sure if I want the log to stay there. I might move it someplace else. It was quite nice that they could uh, hide under it. Maybe if we put it on that side. Mix things up a little bit, hey? I think it's now time to put the fish back, don't you? <laughs> now the thing is, if they have children, what do I call them? <sighs> oh, they just want to be together. <laughs> We're going to be quite unhappy that I've disturbed their home so much, but I feel better now that it's uh, a lot cleaner for them and that the plant, plants that are in there are still alive. Oh, they're going to try and stay at the bottom. Come on, it's back to your home. Oh, Mari, come on. They did this when I bought them. Come on. Come on, they're fighting the current. Come on. There they go. Back at home. And your pondweed too. The water will stay a little bit murky for the next day or so, but it should really clear up soon after. I can see Mari is having a little swim, assessing the situation. <laughs> Fergus is not quite so bold. So that is how the pond is doing. And I might be a parent to little tiny fish babies, which is so exciting. And um, now that we've had a look at that one, let's have a little look at my wildlife pond. Although it won't take very long because it is very, very small uh, because I know you often ask about that as well. Oh, it looks like the sun might even come out. But yes, the wildlife pond is right up here and you can hardly see it because it's tucked away behind all of this foliage. <laughs> and I really don't do any maintenance at all in here. Um, the duckweed is sort of overtaken. Uh, I haven't seen any frogs yet this year, but I don't get frog spawn because I have newts and the newts do uh, breed in here. So you usually either have frog spawn or newts because each other would otherwise eat the spawn of the other species. Uh, but the water lily, that's my grandmother's. It was a division I took from her pond when she was alive. And we have had that years and years and years now. Still does very well, despite it being a Belfast sink. And there's lots of foliage all around it to give all the invertebrates lots of cover. And if I set up my wildlife camera, I quite often see the birds drinking and bathing in there. And also I've had a fox as well that's come past. So I know it does attract a lot of wildlife, but I don't really know what goes on in there otherwise because the duckweed covers it up. Sometimes I try and take it out, but it's so quickly quick to breed that there's, it doesn't really seem that much point. So <laughs> I kind of just let it do its thing. Although I may give it a little bit of maintenance in the autumn time because that's the best time to give a wildlife pond some maintenance. And um, yeah, just make sure it's a little bit cleaner in there because I think there's quite a lot of mud now in the bottom. But oh my gosh, the hawthorn tree is in bloom now. Look at that. Sun's coming out, rain stopped, birds are singing, this is great. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this little pond update. I know a lot of you have been asking after it and I hope I've answered any of your questions, but if I haven't, 
do pop them in the comments down below and I'll make sure I update you on my pond throughout the season. All those plants are hopefully now going to sort of flush out and fill out the pond and there won't be quite as much empty space on the surface there. And um, I'll keep you posted on my pregnant fish and if I get some little baby fish to look after, it'll be really exciting if that happens. <laughs> Take care, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.